Hello, I'm Julie Conroy. I'm the research director for the fraud and AML practice at IT Group. And I am delighted to be joined by my friend TJ Haran. TJ, it's, it's great to see you again. It's great to see you, Julie. This is uh, truly a, a wonderful opportunity to get to talk about some of these topics. So today we're really going to be thinking about technology's role in fraud and AML convergence. One of the biggest questions we get from our financial institution clients are, you know, what are the, the key things they should be thinking about as they are evolving their technology backbone? Um, and I would say my top two would be as you are looking at your next generation solutions, make sure that you have a unified and holistic data infrastructure that can be shared across both fraud and AML competencies so that you can leverage all of the, the commonalities of both internal and external data that can benefit your detection routines and investigations. Um, and then also, you know, real time is table stakes at this point, and you have to have that real time detection and interdiction capability to, to keep up with the patterns of bad activity. So, TJ, I, I know you're having a lot of conversations and, and helping a lot of organizations with this journey. So, so what else should financial institutions be thinking about as they are applying technology to this challenge? Just to expand on some, two of the points that you raised, um, one around the data um, and having a, a technology framework that allows you to harness the data. Right? You need to be able to have flexibility in how you ingest the data flexibility in how you combine the data, flexibility in how you, you know, optionally go out and look for other pieces of data that you might need in your decision flow process. So those kind of the, some of those themes that you, you highlighted there in the opening, um, you know, really drive a lot of the technology decisions, right? You can have all the best uh, intentions in the world, but at the end of the day, if your operational systems are unable to ingest and make uh, business relevant or business contextual sense of that data in a way to let you make better decisions for your customers, you're going to fail the technology hurdle. So that's really one key area about making sure your technology investments have the flexibility to handle all this ver variability in data. I think the other aspect around that is uh, analytics. You know, the, the, we see analytics everywhere. Um, and, you know, lots of organizations investing in data science, uh, data scientists and teams who are building new analytic capabilities. But very often, um, the deployment of those analytics becomes a challenge. And that's one of the largest areas of investment here at FICO is building a platform that has the capability not only to deploy analytics, but also to leverage the flexibility around data ingestion. And another area of investment that we've been doing is also building out capabilities so that customers can build their own analytics to be deployed on the platform. And they can leverage open source technologies as well as FICO proprietary technologies like Instant ML. So the power of the FICO IP in the hands of customers to build analytics that they can deploy seamlessly on the platform. And the capabilities about marrying that up with data ingestion. So, that's one of our keys to our future. One of the areas that we believe drives a lot of the convergence of fraud and AML. But Julie, are there other technology areas that people should be exploring as they look at this convergence topic? Well, and I mean, you're, you're talking about analytics and, and I think that's just really the, the, the key opportunity here, especially as we compare the legacy approach versus what's the art of the possible today with the you know, native machine learning types of data infrastructure and the, uh, the, the analytics that can, that can leverage that underlying infrastructure. And it's really all about flipping the paradigm. You know, it's going from the old approach where you, know, you had rules that were looking for bad behavior. And it was really hard to adjust in time to keep up with the shifting patterns of the bad guys. Um, and it's also difficult to have a rules-based infrastructure that doesn't inconvenience a lot of your good customers. And so that's really where we see the opportunity with machine learning analytics is you're turning that upside down and you're analyzing your good customer's behavior 
and then you're finding the anomalies that are indicative of something that's potentially bad. And you know, I've had a couple of conversations just over the past few weeks with institutions that are seeing great success with this against really challenging problems. You know, synthetic identity fraud is you know, the, the elephant in the room for a lot of institutions because it is this huge problem that is so hard to detect. It's hard to see if this is a synthetic identity that was developed out of the ether or if it's a customer that's new to credit or new to country. But I was talking actually just this week with an institution that has had a lot of success leveraging both their internal data, enriching it with external data, and then applying machine learning analytics to really help detect these folks as they're coming in the door or you know, in the early life of the institution. Yeah, another great example, and this is something that is uh, you know, problematic for a lot of institutions is real-time payments, be it on the consumer side of the equation or the, the wholesale side. But you, you do have to understand, you know, is this a genuine transaction that my customer is trying to send? Or is this, you know, somebody that's been scammed and socially engineered? And, and when do we put that interdiction in place? And, and machine learning analytics is absolutely essential for that use case. You know, the thing that I would add to, to, to build on that is that, you know, part of the technology investment in um, supporting this kind of drive in the, in the convergence of fraud and financial crime is really, you know, figuring out where you are and then kind of aiming for the future and making sure that you've got the platform that's going to enable you to do many of the kinds of things that you're talking about, right? A wide variety of problems. We know that fraud problems are never going to uh, go away. They're just going to get more clever. And being able to ingest and bring all those data elements together in one platform, both today, where you might start a little small, and tomorrow, uh, where you might need new capabilities that you don't even know about today, right? That's really kind of one of the keys when you think about the technology infrastructure.